Okay, let's get back to, into that in a second because I think we have Wes Bentley. Oh, perfect. All right. Let's talk to Wes Bentley. Wes. How are you, man? Good to right. see you, buddy. Good to see you. How are you? I'm great. How are you feeling tonight? This is an exciting moment. Yeah, it's really exciting. I actually feel oddly relaxed. <laughs> I, you know, it's uh, it's cool to be a part of it, and they've got such energy out there, and I love being around it. We uh, obviously always uh, laugh and tease about the, the beard. I thought when we spoke a couple weeks ago that you were thinking for a second about doing it tonight. Did you think? Did you consider it? I considered a handlebar. I considered just a flat mustache. <laughs> Some big chops, but uh, I thought you know the beard is uh, the beard is what it is. So <laughs> I'm gonna go with a little bit, just yeah, a little bit, a little grizzle. But people have to sp pay their 12 or 13 bucks and yeah. see it on the big screen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they can see that. You know, it's hard to maintain that beard. So um, give me a sense. I mean, you've obviously done your fair share of great work and some really exciting movies, but there's something different about the fandom about this. I know you've interacted a little bit with them. Give me a sense of what's different about Hunger Games fans than general fans of movies and you know in general. I, 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 you know, that's a good question, but I, I feel like, just like the fans of the books, they are really intelligent, and I mean, not that that's a big difference between other fans, but what, 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 what kind of uh, makes them all um, the same is that they're very intelligent, politically sophisticated. You know, it's all about one girl and her, um, and her journey, and, and uh, um, it's a unique story, you know, and, and so I think, uh, I think everyone's excited about that. It's also very emotional, um, as well as exciting. You obviously, uh, Seneca obviously figures heavily into the Capitol scene, some outlandish costumes, outlandish sets. Oh, yeah. um, we talked about this a little bit, but give me a sense. When you're there, I mean, if you're an actor, you can focus up, but at a certain point, you're in this environment, are you thinking, really? Like, how am I supposed to? I mean, this is absurd. This is a little silly. <laughs> <laughs> that's the fun of it, though. I mean, that's, uh, that's part of making movies, you know? That, I remember sitting on set and looking around and seeing all those uh, the wardrobe and the, the cool makeup of the, the other beards, and I thought, this is, this is what you kind of dream of as a kid. You know, and it's come to life in front of me, and I'm, I'm getting to sit right in it. And, uh, and you know, sometimes you do films that's about uh, everyday life and subtlety and, and, and the relationships. And this film has all of that, and it's just got all that, uh, everything on the outside, the, the, the garishness on the outside that uh, um, that's, makes it fun, too. I mean, how important was it could, that it, it functions on a number of levels, right? I mean, it works as just a piece of pop culture entertainment. It's an it's yeah. intense kind of action film and thriller. But it's saying something about the society we're living in, about privacy, about totalitarian regimes, etc. I mean, how how important was that to you that it was kind of working on multiple levels? Well, it's very important to me playing Seneca and the games maker. I I started to really tap into reality TV and what I felt like reality TV was already doing to our minds and a bit for the most part. I'm not going to just blanket statement, but for the most part, it's kind of what it's doing to our minds is uh, similar to what's happening to these kids and these. Uh, in this version and also like you said the government oppression you know i don't think sometimes we realize how oppressed we might be and so it feels very accurate to where we are now and so it's it, i think it'll, it'll be very very reflective in that sense so on the reality show tip do i take it you were not watching the jersey shore marathon on mtv this weekend <laughs> no oh I, I taped it it's it's when i get home right how can i miss that obviously i didn't say i was unique <laughs> You're as susceptible as all of us. Exactly. <laughs> My mind is much like everybody's. Um, is it fun at a, a premiere like this to reunite with some cast and some people? I mean, you, you know, I mean, you interacted a, a bit with uh, most of the tributes, I guess, or yeah. were around in some of your scenes. Yeah. I love those kids. You know, they were really passionate about what they were doing, and I loved hanging out with them and uh, answering questions about the business. And um, you know, I really loved hanging out with the, with the older cast too because they're I'm a fans of all of them and. Um, it strikes me when you say the kids, because I think of you. I as mean, a kid? as a kid. Still. I know, I know, I know. But I, oddly enough, I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> so I mean, it, it happens to everybody. When did that hit you? Uh, it's hitting me right now as we're talking. <laughs> oh, no. I was doing fine until this moment. The midlife crisis is hitting you now. Exactly uh, on this stage. <laughs> um, what's coming up next for you? Do you know what the next gig is? Um, well, you know, I've got some great projects coming up that I, I, I wish I could talk about, but I can't. But I'm actually, that means they're cool, I guess. That's great. Um, and I did a couple of great independent films, one with Frank Langella I'm very excited about called The Time Being, and I'm proud of. Uh, I've enjoyed talking to you on this whole publicity circuit, man. Have a great time tonight. Good to see you, Wes. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, buddy. Great. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, man. Wes Bentley, Seneca Crane, of course. 